Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jacob Hegland, and today I'm presenting our submission to ITSC 2020 titled Rail Delay Prediction with Spatial Temporal Graph Convolutional Networks. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Panu Korn Taliangpong, Professor Simon Hu, and Professor Hui Tran. This work was supported by the ZJU UIUC Institute, and we are excited to be working on future projects as part of this collaboration between universities. As the title of our work suggests, we'll be focusing in on delays in rail networks, in particular the British Rail Network. Since 2000, the British Rail Network has seen a large increase in number of passengers, nearly doubling from 1 billion to 1.7 billion passengers in 2019. At the same time, the British Rail Network has seen increases in delays, with one particular type of delay, known as cascading delays, increasing from 600,000 to 800,000 minutes in 2019. Now it's clear to me that if something isn't done to adapt rail services and fix these delays, they will continue to increase, causing potential economic damages for those who rely on rail services in their everyday lives. Before we get into the main content of our work, I would like to refresh everybody on cascading delays in rail networks, which can be illustrated by this simple example on the left. Now in this example, it's easy to see that if train one was delayed, it could also cause delays into train two due to the required following distance between trains on the same track. If train 2 is then delayed, it could cause cascading delays through the network and delay train 3 as well. The delays experienced by trains 2 and 3 are known as cascading delays, and these particular types of delays aren't always easy to model. For example, in the illustration to the right, the added junction makes it very difficult to tell how trains 2 and 3 would be affected if train 1 is delayed. Now the problem of reducing or eliminating delays is a difficult one, and in recent years two primary approaches have emerged. In particular, mathematical approaches, which have focused on developing models to provide insight into processes that govern cascading delays in rail networks, and data-driven approaches, which have worked to develop statistical models to directly predict delays on rail networks based on some historical data. Now, both of these approaches have benefits and drawbacks. And one drawback of the mathematical approaches is that the assumptions built into models may not necessarily reflect real-world systems, which could limit their use in real-world situations. At the same time, data-driven approaches often are limited in the scope of their experiments, where they may only focus on a single line, and models typically don't take into account for complex network interactions. In our work, we hope to approach this problem from a data-driven perspective and hope to improve de delay predictions by more directly modeling complex interactions in the rail network. We work toward this goal through three primary contributions. First, we develop a graph-based formulation that is suitable for rail networks. Next, we use this graph formulation to apply an existing graph neural network model to predict delays in the British rail network. Finally, we compare this graph neural network model with baselines to understand its prediction accuracy and performance characteristics. Before we discuss the details of our graph formulation, I would like to motivate it from the perspective of structure in statistical models. One of the simplest statistical models with learnable parameters is known as a multilayer perceptron, which considers a vector of features as the input. Now, in theory, this model should be good enough for any prediction problem, However, when there is a clear structure to the data, we want to use a model that takes advantage of that structure. For example, convolutional neural networks, which are designed to work with image data specifically, have shown much higher performance than multilayer perceptron in image recognition tasks. The takeaway of this example is that the more structure in the model, the better performance you'll tend to see. Now, in our case, instead of image data, we actually have graph data because the rail network fits very naturally into a graph-based formulation. And instead of a convolutional network, we'll be using a graph neural network. Now we start our graph formulation by defining our graph formally. On the left, we have the mathematical definition of the graph, which simply says that the stations act as nodes on the graph and the links will act as edges on the graph. On the right, we show the part of the British rail network that we focused on for this work. And if you actually visualize the rail network for this section, you might end up visualizing something like the graph that we defined here. Now, what this graph shows is that the stations are the blue circles. These are the nodes of the graph, and the rails between the stations are shown in red. These are the links of the rail network or the edges of the graph. Now, before we move on from this definition of the graph, we must note that most existing graph neural networks consider node-based features, and the current graph definition will cause some problems. Why is that? Well, right now, links are defined as edges of the rail network graph, and we really want them to be nodes of the graph so that we can take advantage of graph neural networks. Now, in order to do this, it's actually a very simple calculation. What we do is we calculate what's known as the line graph, where the rail links become the nodes of the graph, 
and the stations become the edges of the graph. And that formal definition is shown up here on the right. Um, what this does is it has a very minor effect on the actual structure of the graph. You can see here in the middle that there is some change um, around these complex junctions, but for the most part, it doesn't change too much. Um, but what import importantly, what this does is it changes our interpretation of nodes and edges and allows us to formally define our goal. So with this graph defined, we have our goal, which is to predict delay across all nodes of the line graph, not the original graph, at some point in the future. I would now like to walk you through the architecture we used for this work. What we ended up using is a previously developed model known as spatiotemporal graph convolutional network. And we're going to take a high level view of this architecture. So what this model does is it takes as input uh, past data along an entire graph and that graph's adjacency matrix. Two of the larger blocks in this model are the SDCon flock and the outer layer, uh, the output layer, sorry. And these are each composed of multiple operations. For example, we break down the STCon flock over here, and we have two more, uh, more fundamental operations that we can do on our data, and they'll be used to capture different dimensions of data. The first of these layers that we'll be looking at is known as the spatial convolution layer, which acts to capture local structures in a graph. And it accomplishes this by creating a weighted combination of nodes and their neighbors. So for example, if we're looking at this node, its neighbors would be these three nodes right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a weighted sum of all four of these and propagate it back to this node's value for the next layer. This combination is known as spatial embedding, and as the model is optimized, it learns to extract the most useful combinations of nodes and their neighbors. Now, if you've ever heard the term deep neural network before, the deep part of that comes from the, rep the repetition of these convolutions to pull out more and more abstract features, which have been very useful in practice. So we can repeat this as many times as we want, and we find that it tends to pull out more abstract features, which are very useful for graph prediction problems. The actual operation that we're using here, it, it leverages spectral graph theory and utilizes an object known as the graph Laplacian, which just pulls out some eigen features of the graph. And it is very efficient at, ca at calculating these combinations and extracting these features for the prediction. The other important part of this architecture is known as the temporal convolutional layer. Now at a high level, what this layer is doing is it's capturing details of the graph as time passes. So imagine we're looking along the time axis of our graph here, and these circles represent raw values on a particular node of the graph. In our data, we actually sample the state of the rail network every 10 minutes, so you can think of these as 10 minute discrete samples of, the, of a particular node. Now what this method this convolution method does is it acts like a sliding window along past methods, or sorry, along past values of the nodes, and it combines these values into temporal embeddings. So for example, the window will start out, if we have a size three window, it will start out by combining the values at T1, T2, T3, and it will turn them into a single embedding. It will then slide along two times two, three, and four, create another embedding, and so on throughout the entire in input history. Now, as I mentioned in the previous few slides, we will be focusing on a subset of the British Rail Network, and in particular, this is the subset we'll be focusing on. The particular journeys that we focused on are those inbound to London. So we're starting out at some station and journeying into London here. Uh, all of these journeys also pass through Didcot Parkway, which is around here, and end at London Paddington Station. In this data set, we found that there were around 21,000 journeys um, in 2016, 2017. And some examples of the data fields that we have are the ride ID, the location, the departure time at each station, both scheduled and actual, and the arrival time at each station, both scheduled and actual. The primary feature we used for this work was created due to limitations in the data set that we utilized for this work. And I'm going to walk you through a simple example to better understand these limitations. Now, in this example, you only need to know four things. One, a train departs from station A at some time. Two, the train does not stop until it reaches station D, over here on the right. Three, there were some delays, and so the train actually arrived five minutes late at station D. And four, this train traveled along certain links during this trip, those particular links being AB, BC, and BD. Now, I have a question for you. Which of these links caused the delay? 
the answer to that question is you can't know because the data that I have given you is not specific enough to tell you where these delays came from. Um, we experienced this problem in our data set and what we did to attack the problem is we introduced something known as link attributed delay. And simply what we do is we equally attribute the delay that is experienced to all of the links that were passed during a particular journey. And this is the primary feature that we use in our model. Now also note here that we don't explicitly model cascading delays in this uh, feature. What we have is that the graph formulation, in addition to link attributed delay, should be able to capture the delay dynamics in the graph. And capturing cascading delays is just sort of an implicit assumption in the prediction. Now that we've described the primary components of the STGCN architecture, let's see how it compares against the other models. Now in this comparison, we used linear regression and multilayer perceptron as our baselines. Neither of these models utilize specialized layers to extract features like STGCN does, so we're really interested to see how the performance of these models changes as we increase or decrease the input and output time horizons. Now, before we move on with more results, it must be noted that all of these models were evaluated on the same testing sets of data, which were not seen during training. The original data set was split using a uniform sampling, where models were trained on 70% of the original data, validated on 20%, and tested on the remaining 10%. Next to the models, we show, that we show the input time horizon, and we vary this to show um, how the model performance changes across different domains. So in this, in this first set of results we show, we have 60 minutes in the input data. Now we use the mean average error metric to understand the average model performance across the 10 minute, 30 minute, and 60 minute prediction horizons. We find that across all models, prediction performance degrades as the prediction horizon increases, but the STGCN model performs the highest nonetheless. We also use the root mean squared error metric and use the same prediction horizons. Um, this metric is very useful at measuring outlier performance, and what we find is that STGCN indeed does perform the best out of these, probably due to the specialized layers, spatial and temporal, that it utilizes. Um, in the second set of results, we have two hours of input data, and what we find is very similar trends where model performance degrades over time, or as the time horizon increases, um, but STGCN remains the highest performing model of them all. Now what this does altogether is that this suggests that STGCN is able to capture more useful temporal and spatial trends in the data than these other models due to the specialized spatial and temporal layers. To conclude this talk, I would like to recap what we have done as part of this work. So first, we developed a graph-based formulation of the rail network. We then applied a graph neural network model, which demonstrated favorable performance compared to other baselines in a rail delay prediction problem. And finally, as a result of this work, we believe that graph neural networks can bring a great deal of value to prediction problems in rail networks. And as a result of this work, we hope that other researchers in this area are inspired to understand how graph neural networks can bring value to other areas of transportation as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming to this talk.